What's going on, A pluses, nerd mixes? It's your boy, Indy Uchiha. And you can see by the overlay that I'm here to bring you the review for Hills, episode six, House Show. Man, this episode was actually um pretty good, especially after the buildup and kind of like the hype of what happened at the end of last episode while Bill hijacking the uh, DWL show that was going on. Them taking a moment uh, to be able to sit back and break down these character, what was going on in these characters' minds and the different things that's happening with them before the uh, the big show at the fair uh, was pretty interesting. To me, it's almost like the 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 interviews or the promo spots that happen that are are i guess retracking uh retracing over all of the events you know what i'm saying that leads up to the big match so i i really understood and appreciated the fact that they took the time to actually do this now, each episode of Hills, uh, the title always has something, some wrestling buzzword or something that's used with the boys in the back, you know what I'm saying, as the title. And to me, House Show was, was kind of appropriate um, for what was going on because a House Show is like an untelevised event. Uh, only the fans in attendance get to see. And a lot of times they do stuff that's out of character or what you know the character for. And with all the backtracking and apologizing that happened, especially between heels and faces, you see some you see some faces do some hillish things because it feels like they're only out thinking thinking about themselves and worried about what's going on with them. And you see some heels step up, and understand that some of the stuff they did might have been wrong, and have to apologize and everything about what's going on. So th this was this was a good episode uh, for me for Ace. Um, it was an interesting episode for Jack. But to me, the stars of this episode, for personally for me, are Rooster and Willie and uh, Wild Bill. Uh, just for the fact of everything that they got out and getting to just see more of those characters and understanding what's really going on in their lives. Now, let's talk about Rooster for a second. Rooster's still dealing with the issues of feeling like he's never going to get a shot at the spotlight. And so you have that guy who's in charge of dystopia wrestling, right? Um, I can't remember his name, but he's a showrunner. He's actually the showrunner for the show. Um, I do know his name, Michael, Michael Miley, uh, one of the showrunners. Uh, he guest stars as Charlie Gully, the uh, owner and operator of Florida Wrestling Dystopia. And he comes and he offers Rooster some money to come wrestling for him, realizing how uh talented rooster actually is but at the same time possibly being able to you know what i'm saying stick it to jack when what's going on uh watching rooster see i don't know if rooster's necessarily loyal to the dwl or if it's just he's loyal to himself being used as a pawn because he knows he's better than that because he doesn't react too well with this offer you know what i'm saying that gully gives him but after having a conversation with Jack, again, at a time where Jack said he was going to talk to him, at the, I think it was the barbecue after the uh, christening, um, he still kind of blows him off. And and that's that's because Jack doesn't even have an idea on what he's doing uh, with this, this fair uh, gig that they actually got. Um, doesn't have a script ready. And it's starting, you're starting to understand how maybe Jack shouldn't be the one in charge of doing all of this because the script's always at the last minute. Uh, the ticket sales aren't going well for the entire fair, which they came to DWL to try to boost sales for the entire fair, not just for that one event. So it, it's, he, all, he seems to put a lot of pressure on himself, and he, he falters under the pressure a lot. He can't juggle family. Uh, all these employees that he has working for him on top of all these gigs and stuff that he's has. So by by the end of the show, you get Rooster calling Gully and tell him he'll accept that payday to show up. You know what I'm saying? To wrestle for the uh for dystopia, which to me feels kind of like, 
you know, when when the WCW WWF wars, when people were jumping, you know, what I'm saying back and forth. So it feels kind of like that. And in the end, I don't know if this is going to help Rooster or hope Rooster in the end and her to standing with those people over there at the DWL. If anything goes wrong with dystopia. Right. The, the show here uh, worked a lot around Ace. Um, Big Jim's daughter is getting christened. He makes Ace the uh, godfather. So Ace has to stand up and speak and all that. Ace isn't for that, um, especially with feeling how he feels because it opens up with him watching video of his dad. And then it ends with him watching video of his dad. So it is interesting to me on where his mind's at, you know, with, with everything that's going on. But he eventually ends up going to the christening getting there which we'll get into what the hell jack's doing to start off with but he ends up getting there uh and he's had no interaction with nobody in this episode except for like big jim you know what i'm saying before this and his mom for a split second because his mom is down to like getting rid of all his dad's stuff um ace is like what if i want to keep some of it his mom well he left it to me she's still in her feelings about everything that happened so that that's interesting to me on how they're handling that so it is crazy uh, how he has to handle, you know what I'm saying, all them types of situations and what's going on. But he gets there. He gets an amazing speech, an apology, um, talks about how uh, you're getting your sins washed away. But there there will be times you fall to where you're seen as a bad person. But um, th there's always that chance to apologize, say you sorry. You're going to make plenty of mistakes, but it's how you... Uh, come back from those type of mistakes to see uh, what type of person you're going to be. And you got a lot of people that love you and Duffy makes good people. I mean, he's, he's laying it on thin. I mean, thick, but I, I love what he's saying because after that he goes to the barbecue, he tries to apologize. You know what I'm saying? To Bobby Penn, he's apologizing to crystal and, and all that's interesting but um, I don't think the apology thing is going to work with Bobby Penn because Bobby Penn still thinks he's somewhere at fault because he's so green. You know what I'm saying? The wrestler not understanding that that was done to him on purpose. He feels like something is his fault that he didn't do something right. And that's the reason he ended up getting hurt. And I really feel when he gets past that is only that's the real time when him and Ace will be able to sit down and have that, you know what I'm saying, conversation. And even with the Crystal situation, the fact that they both apologize to each other for their acts and what happened. Um, it just felt like a wash. It, it felt like a reset and that they can go back to doing the same dumb stuff that they've been doing before. It, it didn't really feel like they took a step forward in what happened. And uh, as far as the writers been going with this, it seems like they push Ace a little bit forward and then he takes like eight steps back. So I'm wondering if they're going to let this growth that he had actually stick uh, with him as a person and let him to start divide being a heel on screen away from you know what i'm saying being a heel in real life now crystal had to deal with the situation of everybody being mad at her and her not really understanding why and, and not understanding that it was her fault or she was the catalyst it necessarily wasn't her fault that it happened but she was the catalyst for what ended up happening in the ring last week and so she had to jump through hoops to deal with that not even knowing if she's ever gonna be in the ring anymore because it don't like Willie has any interest in her ever being in the ring and she might have just messed stuff up for herself uh getting into her own head and letting wild bill suggest that she do something she she shouldn't do because she should have known from watching ace do it that wild bill isn't the person to listen to when it comes to making decisions in life i mean look at where his life is right now right come on y'all and ace even though not Ace, but Jack, even though his wife put this christening on his calendar, the baptism, said that he was supposed to be there. She's debuting a new song. And, and they, they periodically showed through the episode how, how important this song was because she's been, I think she's been writing this song since the birth because it's been different times. She's been strumming, singing that same song. She's on the porch singing a song, tells him, hey, you got to meet it. But he books a podcast on the same day as the christening said he'll be there. Right. And even with leaving uh, the podcast 50 minutes early, he still didn't make it to the church on time to hear his wife sing. So uh, it just feels like he he's totally putting family on the back burner when it comes to wrestling and 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 can't find a balance between the two. Right. 
Uh, the guest star of this episode was none other than the hardcore legend, as you guys saw in the thumbnail, Mick friggin' Foley. Um, he ended up playing a wrestler, uh, you know what I'm saying, that was fairly popular, has a podcast, and wanted to bring, you know what I'm saying, it's good for him, it's good for them. Uh, everybody, I don't even know if it was Willie who pulled that, but um, who pulled the favor, but ex-wrestler Dick Valentino was interviewing Jack Spade. And and in true Mick Foley fashion, he had on the uh Santa Claus like Hawaiian shirt. He probably wore that to the set that day and just recorded it. That probably wasn't even like a costume change. But with Jack not knowing what was going on as far as the storyline, uh, the questions to push uh the story forward was gonna happen, he couldn't answer. You know what I'm saying? On who's fighting who, what's going on with this show, why should we come to this show? So McFoley's character uh, pivoted to his dad's suicide to strike up something that was going to be of interest. You know what I'm saying? After people told him that this guy's a dick, don't, don't, don't do the show. You have to watch. You know what I'm saying? Watch him on what he's going to do. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, because he's going to try. Jack wasn't having it. Stormed off because he didn't want to talk about it. So he left the pod 50 minutes early. He did 10 minutes. We'll do one hour interview. Did 10 minutes, left 50 minutes early. Still didn't make to the church on time. So that that's just doing nothing but draw spiking up more drama between him and his wife, right? It's crazy because all he could think about is the script and how to make the DWL successful. But in doing that, he's he's causing problems at home with his family because his family feels uh, especially his wife feels like she's second fiddle which she's explaining very well in different ways. It's like every time she has this issue, she finds a more elegant way to try to explain it to him, and he's just not getting it, you know what I'm saying, in his head. Now, the the interesting confrontation uh, in this episode that was going on was between Willie and Bill, because Willie even tells your boy, uh, Ace, that, I mean, Jack, that if he brings on Wild Bill to – to the DWL that she don't know if she could be here, that she's going to have to step away, which is very interesting to me when it comes to that. Right. So I'm like, all right, cool. I get that. They're, they're going to figure out some way in order to do that because I don't feel like the DWL operates without Willie, but with the stance that wild bill took and the way the fans reacted, can Jack not take wild bill up on his offer to help put the, to help, spur the dwl forward especially when it comes to this fair so uh jack tells bill he's not doing nothing with him until he has to talk with willie so bill's trying to get to talk with talk with willie they finally get to this conversation that they have when she's coming to shut down the uh facility right cutting everything off really awkward uh interaction but the confrontation was just crazy but it was like really really heartfelt because i didn't know that that type of stuff happened and and them really telling you what, what happened between willie and bill that many years ago not just with the abortion and stuff that she had but the fact that um she decided to attach her wagon to the horse of tom spade uh, and go from being a heel to a face because she felt like that was going to be better for her career and at the same time it ending uh her and wild bill's relationship um without even talking with him about it and that that would that's what turned him into the person that he's in now you know what i'm saying it it, it was when he stopped giving a crap about people and basically turned into the little arrogant you know what i'm saying sharp turned uh tongued a-hole that he is now so um, but that, that still didn't give him the right to talk to Willie the way she did, because Willie at the same time was feeling bad for what she did. And that's why she always, always tried to be a friend to him and, you know what I'm saying? Help spur him on through everything dumb that he did because she felt responsible for it, but there's only so much that people are going to take. So that this felt like the first genuine apology that we had the whole episode then the end of the episode them two sitting there 
um, apologizing and seemingly moving past those issues to the point where Willie might be able to accept Wild Bill coming to help, you know what I'm saying, uh, Jack uh, put butts in seats when it comes to that fair show. So very interesting episode. I think they're doing eight this season. So um, two episodes left, I believe. Let me check that out to see how many episodes of Hills we have. So we'll do a quick Google search. So I'm giving you guys the proper information of what's going on because it seems like eight episodes will be pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It's going to leave you wanting more. Maybe they'll increase uh, next season to see what's going on. And we'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll go with it. It, 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 it it'll, it'll be pretty good. Um, I, I don't think it's gonna be bad. Yeah, it's eight episodes. The uh the next episode will be called the Big Bad Fish Man. Um, that comes on Sunday. I do believe it's gonna have something to do with uh dystopia wrestling. And then we come back, and the last episode is called Double Turn. Uh, I can't wait. And season one has been crazy good. And I. I I I know this show has to get uh renewed for season two if it hasn't been renewed already. It's it's a very, very good show. For those who haven't had the opportunity to check it out and would like to check it out, they are doing the first three episodes for free on the Stars app. So you can check that out. And then Stars app, I think it's under ten dollars a month if you want to, and you could, you know what I'm saying, check out the rest of the episodes among some other great content that's on there. Uh, this is something that you guys need to see. Um, amazing guest stars, amazing acting. Um, Alexander is amazing. Stephen Amell is a, everybody on this show is really, really dope when it comes to playing the characters that they play. And it's just something to get enthralled in. If you're not a fan of wrestling, it's still good. If you are a fan of wrestling, you'll, you'll enjoy this a lot. All right. So let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me at Nerd Mix Alpha everywhere. Stream my music at Indie Uchiha. And I'm going to let my man Adam tell you how you can join the Patreon. All right. Bunch of content on there. Something really cool. You guys can check that out. Until next week, it's Indie Uchiha, and I'm out. If you enjoy our content and want to be a part of helping our channel grow, become a patron supporter. We have affordable tiers to choose from that offer a variety of exclusive and early access content. From audio files for all of our shows for you to enjoy on the road, access to our Discord community, and plenty of reactions, reviews, character breakdowns, and more. Check us out at patreon.com slash A plus opinions. And as always, remember, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so anytime we drop a brand new video, you will be notified.